Hi everybody, right, today I thought I will be showing you what I've been doing the last few weeks and that is working on blooms. So it took me a while to kind of find my own recipe. Um, it was trial and error because there's so many different recipes out there and I had to find something that works with products that we've got in the UK. So before I start showing the details, I just want to show you what I've done so far, just to give you an example. So the first one I'm going to show you are some that are just dry, they were still curing, and I still need to um, not varnish them, but resin them. Okay, so you can see the sort of results that I kind of get so far. So I'm not sure if you can see in great detail. Um, so working on it, you know, but it's not it's not going to come great, and, and it's not fantastic right now. But um, it will, it it does get better. The more you do it, the easier in a way it gets. But that's a, a difficult technique. But just to show you what they look like once they are um, resined. Um, so I prepared just a few actually so everybody knows what they're going to get for Christmas now um, these are basically uh, coasters so try to start fairly small um, and this is the results that you get so let me see if I can let me just make sure that it's actually focusing okay so you do get fairly nice results once they are varnished the, pop, the colors really pop um, uh, um, they look kind of good so but the resin side of things that's for another day but it was just to show you what I want to um, try to explain how to get that today so it might be a long video I am sitting down on it because it's going to be a bit complicated okay so you need basically um, three different stages products to, to make these. So you need a base, okay? The base is what uh, people call the pillow. The pillow basically is the base that will enable what you pour on top to kind of flow nicely all over and stretch to create these um, bloom cells. The best pillow I have found is actually a, um, a wall paint from Johnstones. It's a just a simple white um, and it's a low sheen. I've tried matte, I've tried gloss, uh, I've tried high sheen, medium sheen. Low sheen was the best result. Okay, so they come in these like big five litre pots. Um, what I noticed is that at the beginning um, there are quite a lot of bubbles in them. So I started, if I could put it that way, decanting my paint. So what I've done, it looks very messy, but that's just, you know it is. I just put everything in the, oh, not everything, about two kilos worth in a big jug. And I covered it um, to the plastic bag, nice and easy. And I left it alone for two weeks. So it was properly sealed. It does not dry out, it doesn't get thicker, nothing. But all the bubbles finally, sorry about the noise. Let me just remove the plastic bag, put it out of the way. Um, it means that um, the air bubbles come up to the surface and it kind of minimise the amount of bubbles that you're gonna get in your final product. Okay, so that's step one, pouring your pillow. We'll do that in a minute. Step two is preparing your paint. So step two, sorry I have to catch something that was falling, is to actually prepare your paints. A lot of people um, that I've seen online were using specific paints like the Joe Sonia brand. Okay, so I bought this. And I thought, you know, it's not very economical. I've got hundreds of paints here at home let's try other ones and it turns out that it makes absolutely no difference i have used so far um some decor some amsterdam some pebeo um what else did i use some Dalit Rowney, 
you know, it doesn't matter what you've got, you can use. So don't go and do what I did and spend um, money on specific brands of paint because it did not make any difference. I mean, they're lovely paints, don't get me wrong, but if you've got some, don't bother buying anymore. The way I mix them, so oh, let me take back that that colour from Joe Sonia, which is called Colony Blue. Uh, and I think it's one of those, that's it. Basically, you need five parts of pouring medium to one part paint. So 50 grams of pouring medium, 10 grams of paint, okay? The pouring medium, that's your next step. You need, so I am in the UK, so that'd be only for people in the UK, that Valspar wood and metal interior gloss V700 blend and type C for Charlie, okay? That is the one you need. So take a screenshot, do whatever you want, but that's what you need. So to make your pouring medium, you need to have um, some of this, put it in a cup, okay? And you need to add some gloss varnish. I tried different small gloss varnishes from B&Q um, and they did not work very well. I ended up looking for some Joe Sonia gloss varnish. They now have a, a shop uh, in the UK and it's absolutely brilliant. That whole bottle cost me, I think, about eight pounds. And you literally need, let's say you have a cup of that last bar, you need a squirt of that gloss varnish. Okay, that's it. Mix it very well. Then you can take your cup, you put your five parts of pouring medium, one part paint, stir it well, your paint is ready. The last part to be able to get that um, effect, let me just grab one of my um, previous ones I want to show you earlier on. To get that marvin effect, so the bloom effect, these cells that kind of like electric lightnings, you need this only one sort. There's only one way to do it. Wherever you are in the world, you need to use the same recipe. So it's not ideal, it's not cheap, um, but you know, that's what's got to be done. You need to mix um, what we call a cell activator. And your cell activator is Amsterdam titanium white paint and Australian Floetrol. This is the Floetrol that you need. It does not work with Oatrol, the European one. It does not work that well with the American Floetrol because you need to add a bit of water to thin it because it's thicker, blah, blah, blah. Go on eBay, um, that tiny 500 mils, I think it is, half a litre bottle, all in all cost about £20 to bring from Australia, but you need very little, so that's going to last. Okay, so it is an investment, but it will last. So, to make your cell activator, what makes your lightning bits, you need to put two parts of Floetrol, and one part of Amsterdam titanium white. You can actually use the Amsterdam lamp black if you want a different effect, but let's stick to the basics for now. So two parts of this, so 20 grams of this, 10 grams of that. And it's, sorry, and it makes basically your cell activator. So, I hope it will make sense once I start doing it and showing you how to do it. Um, start small. That, uh, that's actually a tile because I found that I had some tiles at home because I do other crafts and I do a lot of um, alcoholic inks um, kind of art as well. And what's good with tiles is that if something goes wrong, you can wipe them clean, a bit of alcohol on it, and they're like brand new. With a canvas like these ones, it's more difficult, okay, to keep them kind of clean if you want to uh, to start again. 
One thing that you will need as well, um, once you start pouring, it's obviously to make your paint move. Depending on the size of your um, base, you know, whether it's a coaster, a small tile, a small canvas, you'll need something to blow your paint around. I've got absolutely no puff. I've tried with uh, a hairdryer that was too powerful for such a small piece. I tried with a straw. I ended up having more paint on my hair than anything else. So I know not everybody's got that, but that's what I personally use. But you can use a straw. You can blow on it yourself. That's not a problem. But it's just me. I, as I said earlier on, I do some alcoholic inks um, paintings as well. And I've got a, a, a small um, blower. I'm trying to remember the word now. Um, and basically, once it's on, it kind of blows the air um, around and I can push my paint. So that's the way I do it. But it's not necessary. It's just because clearly I've got no, um, no puff. Um, so I think that's it. I think uh, hopefully I will put a list of the ingredients and of the proportions etc the ratios in the description of the video but i think bet it's better if i just start showing you um and let's hope it works so step one as i said it's a base so you need actually a thick base so there's my um low sheen white wall paint okay and you need a lot don't think i just put a thin layer when they say you need a cushion it is a cushion i mean they call it a pillow but it is literally a cushion look how thick that is try to cover as much of your um canvas board tile whatever you have so it worked with wood i've done wood i've done um ceramic so it works on on quite a lot of, um, of support okay just to let you know as well i'm on the susan because it'd be easier when i start spinning it oh, i was trying to escape there we go so that's a thick cushion okay like a pad so let me just put a tiny bit more right in the middle now I'll spread it i think the five i got mine from the range and the five liter um tin was i think 11.99 so you know it's not too dear and you do get a lot for it so i know you do use a lot but you get a lot as well so don't don't go and use that like, standard paint because it's going to cost you much more money okay so we've got our base next step is to layer your colors so my advice would be to layer fairly contrasting colours um, each layer. So don't put like, um, I'm not sure, medium pink, bright pink, uh, medium pink, bright pink, you know, because you want to see the difference. So if you want just to use pink, look at very bright pink and a very light pink next. Okay. That's how you're going to get that difference um, and that effect. So I'm just trying to get one. Um, on that one, I had some pink, some coral, some green, some blue, some purple. Um, and you need, uh, I think it, it kind of pops a bit more. Um, so yeah, that's my advice. But obviously you do whatever you want. You know, tastes are very different. Okay, so these are some colours that I made earlier. So because I don't want to waste any, I put the ones that I would use the most in small bottles, squidgy bottles. Um, I kind of mark what they were, like this one is a Josonia yellow green, so I know what they are. Um, but I ran out of bottles, so I had to do them in some cups. But as long as I keep them covered, they will keep, okay? So I thought that I could layer, so that one is a phthalo blue um, from, that is from Dale Rowney, 
Okay, so that's a nice colour. I have a Pebeo transparent, that's a red, but it actually um, looks fairly white. So I'm just looking in my box, see what, what's the name of that colour. That is their, oh, it's primary magenta. Okay, it looks red, but actually it's, um, it's kind of a bright pink. So same thing, as I said earlier on, you need to mix it. Uh, five parts pour and medium to one part paint. Uh, I'm gonna go for that Joe Sonia yellow green. So that's that one. It's really bright, but it's lovely. It works. It works really nice as well. So as I go with that, um, I found that gold works well. So I use Deco Art. Silver was not that great. That was also a Deco Art. So um, you need to experiment, try different paints, and see what works with them. Um, with one another. Um, what other colour can we use? I've got some indigo there that I quite like. That's another Dele Rana, so I'm just going to a quick of a, a shake. I've not used it in a few days. Some indigo, and I've got some nice bright. And I think just four colours for now. I'm just going to get that out of the way for a second. Not everything falls down. Um, I think that's a good start. And obviously, my cell activator. So that's a Floetrol lamp seven in white. Okay, so put that aside for now. So you can layer your paints um, doing some kind of puddles on top of each other. You know, build a circle, put it, put it there. You can also freely kind of spread it a bit everywhere. So you can do this and then lay on top on top or you can just go like that it doesn't matter i've not found any difference okay that's me maybe you will i did not know you said the difference so so that's a bit of the yellow green from joe sonia now i'm going to put some of that phthalo blue from Dale and Rowney. let's put a bit of the primary um, magenta, which is kind of a red to me, a bit of the indigo, okay, um, I think a bit more of that brighter colour because it's quite dark. More tiny bit more pink. I don't want to put too much of that um, indigo because it's quite dark, so that's it. I've kind of done like two layers of each. That is plenty. Okay, now if you look at your tile, whatever, you'll see there's about you can divide it in three parts. You've got about a third there with just a peel of paint, a third of your colours and a third again of peel of paint. That's kind of sufficient. Do not cover the whole thing because you're just going to waste your paint. So you just want about a third of your surface in the centre to be um, covered with your the paint you prepared. So the next step is to work with your cell activator. Your cell activator you're going to Put it on top of this and you're going to very gently blow it across so i want no person to be with my uh, compressor thing um and move it across and that cell activator will kind of carry the paint that you've just drizzled everywhere over the pillow and then um, you'll see that it's going to create some of these cells going to stretch etc but that's the idea so don't squirt it all over like you've just done for these colors find a central point and do it that way so hopefully that's enough i'm not sure we'll see okay so it might get a bit noisy i need to put my compressor on okay so let's do this so you can go with your if you've got um, a straw you can blow but i can't do that so I'm just going to go in the puddle and 
push that case turn it round that's why I put the laser Susan on because it's easier for me but you don't have to do that and I will just go basically slightly blowing on the surface and move keep it quite far but move forward as I see that the cell activator is covering the other colours and it's, it's a delicate job in a way some people do it well, are natural and just blow and just, I can't do this it's um, I feel like it's I'm, I'm playing with eggs or you know something's just going to break so I'm being ever so delicate with these but I don't think you have to be I've seen some um, some ladies just going for it and I assume that's just it's a confidence thing because I am still oh turn it off because I'm still pretty much a beginner um, with this you know I think it's just a confidence thing maybe in a few weeks, few months, once I'm really confident in doing this, I'll just one big blur or even the hairdryer, just wonderful, it works. Um, piece of advice, just close your paints or cover your paints once you're done because you don't want to waste any. It comes from very far away, it costs a lot of money. Okay, so as I am talking to you, you may see that the kind of paint or the lightning bit let's go with that the white bit lightning bit, is kind of sinking back in the middle and that's what you want to do give it a minute to come back to the center to settle you know we've got time it's fine then you can start stretching so you could stretch by basically moving your base you know left like you would do for a, a normal um poor normal there's no such thing as normal but um whether it's a flip cup or anything like that you know you would tilt your canvas move it around you can do this um or you can use a lady susan and basically spin it a bit okay there's no right or wrong um just got to play have fun and i do like using the lady susan so there we go so i'm gonna give it a start and i've got much protection around so i'm sure i'll get covered in paint but at least you'll you'll see what it's like so let's give it a, a first spin and let's see what's going on what's going to happen see you already started to spread that's lovely i like to spin both you know once clockwise once anti-clockwise kind of spread the, the paint a bit better okay let me just center it a bit more so i'm just going to move it there so thanks to the really nice and thick pillow underneath, um, it's it's working nicely. So you see it works. As you spin or as you tilt, the underneath your pillow is going to move um, out of your base, you know, canvas, tile, whatever. Um, and that will stretch these lightning bolts I'm going to call them lightning bolts now um, and that's how you get your effect so let's just try to spin a bit more that uh, was a big one and slow down a bit okay I do have a few air bubbles so you see those white spots that you get there because um, the, the wall paint that I was mentioning that I still decanted um, basically that's the air bubbles popping but there is a trick to get rid of them and i will show you but i want to finish uh, moving my object around first okay so let's see i might do spin once more and then i will tilt and see but then you can play with your composition and see what you want to save what you don't want to save because there'll always be some some paint overflowing on the sides okay <laughs> It's spreading nicely. Okay, so let's have a look. Let's see. So there's still quite a lot of paint on there. Let's see if we can move it, stretch it. You don't have to cover all your corners. 
you know it's up to you it's your creation you do whatever you want and i'm just looking so i don't know if you can see the paint slightly moving oh, well, i've got a big over ball there so it's quite busy but that's why i wanted all these bright colors so you can see actually the different effects um that you can get So I'm definitely not kind of Shelley art level, um, but I really enjoy playing with, now I've got kind of a, a recipe that works. Um, breed experimenting with the colors um, and tilting and see what, what's happening. So sorry, because it's, it's, taking, it's, it's thick, because it needs to be very thick. So it's taking a while to go over that corner. Okay, so do bear with me. I know it's going to take a while, but sometimes it's good to wait to get something nice. I think we are nearly there. I can see the corner of the tar there. Here we go. It's nice and stretched there. So now that's covered on this corner. I don't mind that corner. I don't mind this one. It's kind of. Um, let me just see if I can bring it a bit more towards the middle. Let's give it one more spin, and that's where the paint starts to get really close to the edge, and that's where you usually get covered. But we're going to be all right. <laughs> I really like the um, the light green there with the blue uh, making them, and I do like that little pink effect there. But my favourite bit, so it's raw in that middle. Yeah, that Josonia yellow green is really good. It does um, make beautiful. Um... Okay, so now I don't really want to stretch much more than that. Could. I don't want to, although the video is going to be like five hours long. What I need now is basically try to cover the best I can those white spots that's from the air bubbles of the pillow pen. So I am just going to grab because I thought they were ready, but they're not. Some toothpicks, good old toothpicks. That's one of the many things that I get through a lot of. Okay, let's put this there. And all I do, and I kind of did it by accident to start with, I mean, trial and error, if you just very, very delicately kind of move over the paint from the sides towards your, the white bubble, you can kind of blend it. For the smaller ones, you can basically lift and the paint around it, I hope you can see, kind of covers over it. So slightly, very gently dab. Uh, so that's the best um, word for that, dab. Um, can you see the difference? I mean, the, um, the white bubbles. On some pieces, I've kept my white bubbles because I think they look really nice, but it depends, it's personal taste. It's not fair, you know, it doesn't mean it's wrong. Um, but I just thought you might find this tip useful. So just very, very, very delicately dab it. And it, for the large one, it turns them down. For the small ones, it makes them disappear. Oh, that was a boo-boo there. Let me just put a bit of paint on the side. So you've got to be super delicate because your color is only on the surface underneath you've got that white okay so if you poke too hard or anything you're going to make all the water that is underneath um, come up to the surface and it's going to be um, it's going to be defeating the object really okay so these are too big I don't really want to fiddle with them too much I have tried to kind of dip in um, the side 
and tried to cover there it did not work because same thing you've got a lot of pillow paint there and it's a very uh, film basically of paint there so you'll never just grab the um, your colors you're gonna grab some of the white as well so I'm just trying to cover some of the white the smaller white um, pops okay I do try, it does work, but you've got to be super delicate. And I keep saying that, but it's because I'm not a very delicate type. But I do like, I think that they're much nice. These, oh, there's a big one there. Um, they do, I don't find them ugly. Um, I really don't mind them in my pieces, but it's up to you. It's, it's a bit tedious. Well, it depends if you were patient and basically decanted your um, your white paint as you should have uh, or maybe the brand of paint that you use does not have um, many air bubbles in it maybe it's just because I use a fairly um, so cheap you know a value paint but as I'm experimenting I do not want to spend loads of money you know getting the flow troll from australia is bad enough so so yeah let's let's say that's about done so i hope you've seen the frame what i'm going to do i'm going to bring you in a little bit closer so you can have a, a better look okay so that's the green bit that I really, really like. I think that's really, really pretty. I think that I put actually too much cell activity on there because I've got those really, really big lightning strikes there. But, you know, I'm learning. I'm learning every time I do one. So that, the small white bubbles, you know, as I said, you can cover them. Just need to be patient. Um, what colours have worked nicely together? So this is nice. So that, so that's it. It's a bit better. That um, primary magenta and the green with some sort of orangey colours. That was nice. Obviously the blue and the pink work nicely as well. That, oh, that's it. That's pretty as well. But these are definitely favourite ones okay so i hope it helped i will do some more learn some more and i will come back to you with uh, hopefully an improved um solution and recipe but for now it's not too bad it does work all right i'll see you all very soon take care bye for now